Hopefully this works now. Couch, booth, bed, you didn't mention shower. The moment of truth, the extension. We do have to modify it, like pretty much everything. And then there'll be the extension. Okay. Oh, I see the exhaust on that now. See that one? That's a Ferrari. No, for real, that is a hazard. We're good. Beat up! <laughs> Let me get them temporary lights on, lights on. It's in the way of everything we're doing. What are you up to there? I think this is gonna be our tilt-out drawer. Oh, fancy, a tilt-out drawer. Yeah, you know like they have under sinks in houses sometimes? Yeah. So we can't put our switches there, but this is gonna to connect to the drawer face. So this will go in here like that, and then it'll tilt out. And then we can put spices or like kitchen stuff in there. I don't know, just additional storage. It's just kind of to make use of this space because it can't be used for the switches, so it might as well just be storage. Yeah, looks cool. I'll have to put something here to hold everything in, but I wanted to make sure it fit. It looks pretty good. Looks like it fits. It does. I have finally finished making all of my drawers. We kind of time-lapsed through that experience, but I'm gonna show you what I did now that they're all finished. In general, they're constructed with pocket holes. Super easy way to fasten things together. In addition to that, there is wood glue happening in all of the joints. And that is really what's going to hold all of these joints together over time. We have three of these regular drawers in a stack next to the oven. The dog drawer is on the bottom, and then we also have the big pantry slide out. This is the pantry slide out. It's way bigger than the one that we currently have, so I'm really excited for all of that storage. We also made each shelf the exact size for specific containers that we have, like this one. Just dry food storage regular cans of soup or beans. So it should be really efficient in holding all of the things that we already own. Good 
morning. The project here in the shop today is making shaker cabinet doors. I only have three shaker doors that I have to make for this build, which is wild because in past builds, I've had, I think eight or nine shaker doors to make. So three seems like a breeze. I make these shaker doors on the table saw. It's really easy to make the dado joints on the table saw. The way that these doors are constructed is with really simple wood joinery. So you might have the top of your door here and into this style, there will be a tongue cut into it. And on the bottom of this, there will be a groove. So eventually the tongue will go into the groove. You'll add a little bit of wood glue and this will become a really, really strong wood joint. Now on the inside of all of the rails and styles, there will be a dado cut into here, essentially just an opening that the quarter inch plywood panel will set into. We're not gonna glue that middle panel, but we're gonna add these little rubber balls called space balls into that dado joint. And that's gonna give the middle plywood panel a little bit of room for expansion. So basically to make all of these joints, I'm gonna be really precise with that blade height. Just setting up the table saw is what takes the majority of the time. Cutting all the one by threes, super easy. Measuring, super easy. It is just the setup time for the table saw that really takes all of the effort. gonna go ahead and seal the wood for the drawers. I have this polyurethane coating. It's a General Finishes high performance satin. So this should protect the wood of the drawers. I'm excited to try this out because in the past I have used Danish oil and that worked out just fine. I just wanted to try something new this time and I've heard good things about this general finishes coating. So I'm gonna see how it looks after two coats and I'm gonna give it a light sand with 220 grit sandpaper in between and really just go from there. Just one road to take It's growing up over with green So easy to drive on But not what it seems The poison is spilling upstream And it's taking out Every living thing
drawers because I got them. Is it time for drawers already? Yes it is. Oh thank you. This is a little tilt out drawer that'll go here. We have pull out cutting board. We have all the drawers that go in all these spaces and also the refrigerator and we have to get them off of the bed. <laughs> so they have to go in their places. Pull that slide out. fridge is definitely the first thing that has to go in because it's in the way of everything we're doing. We have very little space in here and this is not where it's supposed to be so it's just taking up this whole corner. So you are going home first. the refrigerator a little bit. We actually put this in here a while ago. You've probably seen it floating around in the build. And we had to put it in here before we installed the door because otherwise we weren't sure if we could get it in here. It can be deconstructed a little bit, yeah. but we weren't 100% sure of that. And Drew thought of it right before we glued that door in. Yeah, it will fit if you take a couple pieces off, but uh, we didn't want to do that. So this refrigerator is the Vitri Frigo DRW 180. This is one of those items that I feel is really all or nothing. We had the fridge converted from a freezer in our bus. It was great, never had a problem, and at a great value, very affordable. These are quite expensive. But now that we're putting it in a box, it's going to be jostled around. We felt like it was worth investing in the really high-end DC fridge. Otherwise, I wouldn't do that. But this thing's going to hold up over the long haul. It was made for boats originally, so it's, it's made to handle that kind of environment. The really cool thing about this refrigerator is that it's the same cubic feet as our other refrigerator. And it is true DC 1224 volt. But really the biggest reason we were interested in this is because of the dual drawers. Each drawer temperature can be set independent of the other drawer. So we can have two freezers, two refrigerators, or an upper refrigerator, a lower freezer, and vice versa. So we can really just set this to be whatever we need week by week, grocery shop by grocery shop. Really just excited to see this in action once we get it hooked up and see how efficient it is on power draw as well. I can't wait to do our first grocery shop with it. the drawers in and I found something very special in this drawer. It's a bread knife. But 
We don't have our other knives in here. So this is gonna be the first knife for the most exciting part of the kitchen. The inset knife block. Yes. I love the inset knife block. And then it goes in the counter. Savannah, there's wires. You're gonna cause a fire. Oh no. No, for real, that is a hazard. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna make a little box for underneath here that will screw up into the countertop from below and it'll just be the size of that little knife block so it'll protect all the knives and section it off from the wiring beautiful but that's in the future Do you want to lift it or no can i get up i think i can lift it yeah off of the thing you said it the dust off it, get the sawdust off it. It's been in a workshop for months. I know. Turn it around. Got it. Put it in. Nice. Look at that little oven down there. Oh, baby. That's a bunny. <laughs> this is a funny little oven. Ooh, this is fun. I forgot that it comes with its own pan. Nice lock on it. Delivery. Okay. Oh, I see awesome right now. You gotta be very careful putting this in. Fresh the counter. Got it. Yes. Pretty much right. We're interrupting this episode briefly to tell you about a new Patreon exclusive video series that's gonna follow this build. Patreon is our subscription only page and for every episode of the build series, we'll be sitting down to watch and talk about all the different projects going on in the videos. So behind the scenes moments, more in-depth details. There's so much that goes into each one of these projects. There's no way that we could fit it all into one build episode. So that's why we're starting this commentary series to give you a little bit more detail about what goes into each project. So we have had to get in there and we did one one bumpy road and it had loosened the, the clamp a bit and I could smell just a little bit of exhaust and went in there yep just need to be tightened down and it's been fine since so yeah nice to have access to the cabinet access to everything this is a patreon exclusive available to all of our patreons five dollars and up patreon is a wonderful way to support your favorite creators so we'll see you over on patreon but now back to the episode we have been working pretty much all day on our booth couch bed design we already have one of these designs that we've installed in every single one of our builds but this one, like everything else, has to be a little bit different. It's actually occupying kind of an L space in the front of our camper box. So it's a complete redesign. It still has a lot of the same mechanics with the sliding ends that make extensions, but the space is just completely different. So I'm not gonna try to explain it. I'm just going to build it. I'm gonna show you what it is because I think that we landed in a really cool spot with all the different ideas that we had. So we have the main pieces to the main part of the couch here. Instead of making all the cuts at once, we're gonna go piece by piece, mostly because this is a completely new design and it might have to be tweaked. Um, yeah, couch, booth, bed, you didn't mention shower. So we'll get to that another day. So it, <laughs> yes, it's more complicated than the uh, original one. Over the last few months, we've done a bunch of planning and hypothetical engineering, but that goes so far we're in the real world in the space now and we got to put it together and see what problems arise and then solve them the problem being that our shower is also part of this booth couch bed design i'm feeling overwhelmed already <laughs> yeah whose brilliant idea was that i think it was yours let's incorporate water into a modular couch space it's gonna be really cool if we can pull it off but we're gonna talk more about that down the line right now we have to just tackle this, so let's start assembling it.
instead of the design we've used in the past where there is a face that is set past it, that, that supports the slats, I'm going to use this angle to unify all of the slats and it can stay flush here so I'm not having to add any bumpers on either side. I'll be able to pull this out which has all the slats connected to it and then it can nest into a channel that we put into the wall or maybe a bumper. Either way this will just connect to the wall. We don't need that face of wood to support the slats. So we're basically saving uh, about an inch and a half by doing this. to use a disc. Drew, are you excited? Very excited. <laughs> We're making the little entry door because we decided to make the end of the couch here, this little piece that we're building, like a dog den. A dog apartment, if you will. The doggy grotto. <laughs> the doggy grotto. <laughs> it's gonna be like a palm tree in there. Oh yeah. <laughs> so of course they have to have a cool door. Of course they do. So I'm just making a square bottom, rounding out the top. And then we'll use the jigsaw to cut that out. It's actually going to be on the back side. We've been calling this piece the ottoman. So the slide outs can't extend when the ottoman is in place next to the other part of the couch in that corner. And since it's movable, we can pick it up and move it around the build. We're thinking that we might just turn it around where this door is so that the dogs can use it. We can put their beds in there and they'll have their own little space to go to because they're small dogs, they're chihuahuas. They like to kind of have a tiny little place to go with their bed and burrow in. I think they're gonna like it. Hello! I got sawdust in my eyes. I made it for you. Get in your bed. Go ahead. Get in your bed. Did you do it? He's like, my bed is squished. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll get a different bed. I'm surprised you could even turn around in there. We'll get a different bed, but do you like it? He's not sure if he likes it or hates it at this point. I made it for you. That's on one doggy's face, I think, though. One doggy's face? I don't think they can both go in there. How do you feel about it? Do you want more amenities? Mm -hmm. How do you like it? He loves it. Okay. <laughs> we'll work on it. <laughs>
it'll hold me first. I think, I think it'll hold you. It's also all the way together right now. <laughs> I don't think that part Holds was me. in question. Speed up. It's holding me. <laughs> okay, now the moment of truth, the extension. Right? Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. It's gonna hold you. You're not that heavy. It's holding me. <laughs> the test is me sitting now. Oh, so. okay. 100 more pounds. And we're good. Speed up. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. We made it and it holds us. Plus this is really only for the bed extension. When you sit on it, it will be together. So it will be over here as an addition to the booth. Mm -hmm. You could push it back Ooh. and have two people sit at the table that way too, I guess. Ooh. Or one. It's got options. I like that. It's completely floating. Could go outside. Yeah. As an extra seat. It could. Probably won't. Let's get ruined by the weather. Heck yeah. The next phase of our build plan is the couch. This is a modular space that kind of moves around, so there's pieces and parts to it. We just brought the end that sits behind me in to test fit it. Again, we ran into some issues with the capping, so we do have to modify it, like pretty much everything we brought in here we've had to modify. I just handed that off to Drew so he can cut it down. So now we can bring it back in here and try to test fit it. We're gonna make sure it fits nice and flush with the fridge cabinet, and his entire power system goes underneath this end of the couch. So we definitely have to get that in here before we can hook up all of the wiring that we just did. Uh, hopefully this works now. Oh, it's snug. <laughs> I guess so. There it is. It is yeah. stuck on the snippet. Got four in there. I think that should be good enough. No, I'll just throw another one in later. Yeah, and then there'll be the extension. It'll actually, I'll be able to lay down. And we managed to make the booth area more comfortable. It's bigger than in our bus. Two inches wider. That's wild. This is a hypothetical there. It's the doggy den. We'll find out if they use it or not. At the very least, it'll be good storage for their food. Yep. If they're both into it, it's gonna be a problem because they're gonna fight over it. My vote is that Pablo okay. is gonna like it. I'm going Mateo, but could go either way. You could. 
Okay, we're pivoting a little bit with the design. If you've, what is this? Is it right? It's too tall. <laughs> pivoting a lot with this. No, it's not. These are just like. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it was wrong. You went over the saw. I thought cut it was it again, wrong. And I'd be like, well, I don't understand. Now it's wrong again. It's about to have a or meltdown. Or screw it in, crooked. I was about to have a meltdown. 